I'm supposed to talk to you about the disease and illness. This short um, pre-recorded session is supposed to introduce you to that lecture. And I'll try to make it very short, but you really need this because uh, you're going to encounter ideas and concepts that coming from different fields and, and they're not really completely integrated and you have to understand where things are coming from and why it's the case. Especially if you start doing self-study, which is actually what I'm advocating or what I'm suggesting. My approach is um, I, I treat you as already like professionals, already college graduates already, and you want to have a postgraduate um, degree to practice as a physician. And at this stage, pretty much uh, the idea is you self-study. You learn a topic, you, you listen to a lecture, but the lecture is only supposed to help you understand the field so that when you read the suggested reading materials and you go around the internet and look for additional information, it will be easier for you to learn the topic that you're studying. My pre-recorded lecture and the supplements that I will add to go along with it are only meant to help you. So the, so the lecture supplements your self-study and the supplement supplements the lecture. That's pretty much uh, what it is. So I, I would give more importance to the, the reading materials and I would give more importance to you on your own trying to look over other things aside from the list of the suggested readings since I feel like uh, the topic is very important. Now, what you notice is the lectures are divided into two parts. One is the natural history of disease. And what I can tell you right now, it's not biopsychosocial at all. It comes from public health uh, epidemiology. When you talk about public health and epidemiology, you're, you're thinking about uh, a macro view of diseases, you know, diseases in general. Ideas that should apply to most diseases, like infectious or non-infectious diseases from a macro level. This is not clinical medicine or, or pathology uh, when you talk about very specific diseases and you try to figure out the, the course of very, very specific diseases and what's causing these diseases. This is the macro view. And the idea um, behind public health is to have this macro view because you want to have interventions on a population level uh, that would be useful for all sorts of diseases, not just one particular disease, right? So this is the, the general approach. And then you can become more specific uh, later on. But the, the general idea, if you're opening an introductory public health book, would be you know, to have a macro idea of what's happening. And that's where the natural history of disease came from. Imagine if you have a doctor working in the community or they're doing public health or trying to figure out the distribution of the disease or the health problem and trying to come up with information about it. That's epidemiology. And suddenly, the first thing you notice is not everybody has the same disease stage. Some don't have the disease yet. Some are about to. Some have it, but they don't know. Others are very symptomatic. So some are really far gone. They are close to, to showing you what the outcome would be. Some would be dying. Some would be recovering, but they're very debilitated. And some are recovering fully, uh, are fully recovered. So obviously, the intervention for each particular stage would be, would be different. So definitely, you need some way to, to conceptualize this situation so that you can plan things out, come up with interventions and ways to figure things out. And that's, that's where the natural history of disease comes from. So what's it doing in a course in family medicine that's trying to go for a systems approach and biopsychosocial? You know, I'm assigned to the disease. I have to present something that's generic that would apply to most diseases. It's not going to be per perfect every time we come up with a macro approach. Definitely, you can think of specific situations that won't clearly fit the approach. There's no one perfect approach that would perfectly handle every kind of disease. You'll find natural history disease during the early family medicine, like 1970s and 1980s. We don't have our own approach yet, but then the idea is, you know, you don't need your own approach because it's, you know, it's eclectic. We're broad-minded. And so we look around, um, family medicine looked around and, and they discovered that public health and epidemiology have various approaches that deals with diseases from a, a macro perspective. And one of these is the natural history of disease. Now, where's the biopsychosocial part? The biopsychosocial part is absent and relatively absent. And you don't sense a lot of biopsychosocial when you look at natural history disease and open up an epidemiology textbook or a public health textbook because it's meant for something else. So uh, what I did is I changed the presentation a little bit. When I got this lecture, 
I know that it's going to be disconcerting because everybody's saying biopsychosocial and, and here I am telling you about uh, something that came out of the epidemiology and public health and there's absolutely no biopsychosocial inherent in the concepts because it's public health and epidemiology. So what I did, I changed the presentation a little bit so that it, it has a biopsychosocial flavor. So when I talk about people having the disease, then we'll say, well, that stage will cause uh, a different kind of psychosocial impact on the individual and the family or a group of people or the community compared to someone who's near the outcome stage, like dying or got better but with disability. Definitely the psychosocial impact on the individual and the family and, and the neighborhood, if you have a whole bunch of people with that outcome, would be different. So that's what I did. So I'm just telling you this because when you start looking for information, you won't you won't see this, especially if you're not looking at the psychosocial textbook or a family medicine textbook. And even if you open a family medicine textbook, you might not even see it. And some of them don't even use natural history of disease. They'll, they'll use some other macro perspective of disease. So this is just one of them. Okay. So the second half of the lecture was entirely mine. I had to add something because, because I know the title of the series is Biopsychosocial. And I know the original lecture was also meant to introduce you to epidemiological ideas, so I cannot take it out. I just have to tweak it to make it feel somewhat biopsychosocial. But I had to add something that's really biopsychosocial right from the start. It's the psychosocial typology of disease and illness. And uh, the general idea is when we look at diseases in general, there are aspects of diseases that will determine or clue you in as to what their psychosocial impact is. For example, if it's an acute illness, something that's happened suddenly, of course, the impact will be different compared to something that's chronic, right? You look at the illness and you say, well, you know, this is progressive. And, and usually progressive um, diseases or illnesses will have this particular psychosocial impact on the individual or the family or, or the neighborhood or, or, or groups of people. So that's pretty much what it is. It's looking at a wide array of useful categories or parameters that will clue you in that would help you determine the psychosocial impact on the family and the individual and, and such. And by doing so, the clinician or the family medicine doctor or the general medicine person or primary care person would have a better approach to the disease. They're not just narrowly focused on, you know, trying to figure out what the disease of the heart is and then you give an intervention or a, a pill or a drug and that's pretty much all there is to it. You know, you're looking at the person who's sick, experiencing the illness, so it's typology of illness, experiencing the illness, which is the disease experience. It's easier for you to try to figure out what the psychosocial impact of this disease is on the patient or the family or what the illness experience is. So that's the second part. Actually, that biopsychosocial approach also uses something that looks like natural history of disease, but it's called time phase of illness. So instead of looking at the disease progression, what it's actually looking at is the progression of the illness experience, just so that you get a sense that um, the natural history of the disease is not the only way of looking at things. There's dozens of ways of looking at things. And this one is very biopsychosocial. It was created for a biopsychosocial purpose. I also mentioned that. So it's called the time phases of illness. So pretty much the psychosocial impact or the illness experience will be different if you're not diagnosed yet or when you're just adjusting or when you already have the disease and or the outcome is known, like you, you know, you're dying or you're recovered and things like that. So it's the time phase of illness, a very, very similar but different from the natural history of the disease. So again, natural history is the course of the disease, the time phase is the course of the illness experience. And that's as much as I can pack into one lecture. So I hope you learn a lot. And I think it's very important. I know that um, when you, you go through med school, it's going to be very disease-focused because unfortunately that's how things are right now. But just bear in mind that every time you look at a particular patient with a disease and you're supposed to treat it and you're running through very biomedical stuff in your head, also pay attention to the illness experience or pay attention to the psychosocial and psycho-emotional impact of the disease on the person in front of you, um, on the family member beside him or the family members at home who are worried and or even the neighborhood or community uh, with people experiencing or experiencing the same illness experience or experiencing the same disease. And if you agree with me that it's very important, although it would might feel like it's not that important as you go through medical school, unfortunately, then 
you'll try your best to learn about it on your own. So at least after you listen to my short lecture, go to the reading material and then maybe later on, if you have time, try to study some more to get a good grasp of things. These three ideas are not the only ones out there. There might be other ideas that might help you out even better so that your approach to patient care, so everyone who approaches you, you treat them holistically uh, in a very personal and very caring manner. Good luck and happy studying.